right? So let's take a look at the behavior of this equation in MATLAB. So here, what I'm uh, having is a code that solves the convection diffusion equation numerically, where you can specify a constant u and a constant kappa. Okay, and uh, uh, for example, I like uh, one of you to just uh, volunteer come up and uh, draw me an initial condition for the function. Basically, initial condition means the the solution at time zero as a function of x. Okay, and uh, uh, specify u and kappa, and uh, let's look at how the solution would evolve. Anybody? Please. Do not specify up. Uh, here f is equal to zero. You just want like two numbers? Huh? You just want like two, two numbers, numbers, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, like ten and six. Ten and six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So now I get you to please come up, draw the initial condition. Oh. Um, here? What's your name? Brad. Brad, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, with one stroke, uh, go from the left uh, to the right uh, inside the screen. All right. Um, so you see a function of x uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi, and uh, the y-axis is the uh, initial condition, the solution at t equals 0. So just like pick a point? Yeah, or? and draw continuously from the left to the right. Sorry. Yeah. Man, that's the best straight line I can do. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did it go? Oh, I get an error. Index <laughs> exceeds <laughs> matrix dimension. Okay, I need to debug something. Okay, I'll, I'll debug this later. Would you mind uh, draw this again? Let me see. Uh, would you mind come up and uh, draw, draw this again? I think uh, there must be some uh, uh, conditions when how you draw the line I didn't consider in writing okay. the code. Okay, I'll try harder. Okay, so right now, good. So now it is solving your equation. This is the solution as a function of time. You can see the time <laughs> goes down. This is what your solution looks like. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it, stays the same. it stays the same and uh, pretty much uh, constant. Yeah. Now, if I want to see something happening, <laughs> what would you like? What do you think we should change? I mean, why do you think it uh, just uh, becomes a straight line so fast? It started as as, as pretty much a straight line, right? Yeah. Can somebody come up and draw a different initial condition that is uh, doesn't start as much as a straight line? Can you come up? I don't know if you can do infinity. It's you said delta spike. function? No, it's just like, uh, yeah, some spell. <laughs> uh, cool. Oh, <laughs> good, good. So, so you've drawn something, we see some action happening, right? Yeah. So that's, that's good. Uh, so what, what do you think of this uh, solution look like? Stabilizes. Stabilizes really fast, right. So, so which term in this equation? do you think is responsible for doing that? It's this term, the diffusion part. Okay, we are going to do some analysis uh, uh, next uh, uh, lecture about why this term does what it does. Okay, so if I want to have this diffuse a little bit slower, let's actually uh, decrease the kappa. By how much? By a factor of 100, let's say, okay? Somebody can come up and uh, draw something Let's see what ha actually happens. Please. Sorry, what's your name? Summer. Summer, okay. What's your name? Burke. Burke, okay, cool. Hey, do you want cool. <laughs> <laughs> now what do we see? It also stabilizes just uh, slowly, right? Yeah. And what else do you see other than the stabilization? I don't know. 
it's the boundary condition. Is, yeah, here. We get a periodic boundary yeah. condition, but things are moving towards the right, right? So what is responsible for making everything moving towards the right? The advection term, exactly. So this term is responsible for moving things towards the right. Okay, now if I want to want things to move, let's say slower, this is pretty fast. Uh, what would you do to make things move slower? Huh? Uh, change u, right? Let's say, let's decrease u by another factor of uh, uh, 100. And uh, can somebody draw another initial condition, please? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> Same one. Cool. So now we can see that it barely moves uh, moves very slowly towards the right, right? But like uh, the, the diffusion term again now is the it doesn't diffuse as quickly, right, as previously. But like uh, uh, now it still diffuses. And uh, now let's say if I want things to move towards the left, what do I do? Negative, Negative x. So let's make it minus one. Okay. Anybody wants to draw it again, please? Thank you. Sama, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cool. Now things are moving towards the left. Good, good. All right. So, so this is like the behavior of uh, uh, advection diffusion equation, what these two terms do. One is responsible for carrying things towards the left or the right. One is responsible for diffusing things. OK. And uh, uh, in the next uh, class, we are going to use a Fourier analysis to figure out why they do what they do. And then numerically, we are starting to investigate how to solve these equations numerically. And the advantage of numerical methods is that using Fourier analysis, we can analyze how things behave in a periodic boundary, in a regular, in a very regular domain, and uh, uh, when there are no nonlinear terms. Numerical methods doesn't really care that much about what boundary you're using, what mesh you're using. I mean, you need to do some adjustment. Uh, and also, what type of uh, terms you have. You can do it on an irregular domain. And it's easy to extend to nonlinear cases, where Fourier analysis doesn't work that well anymore. All right, I will see you next Monday. All right.